All right, folks, I'm going to give you a new Ancients team for beating the Forgotten World. So the new Forgotten World content has dropped. It has brought with it new monsters, new area, new challenges to be had, content galore, extra skills for a whole host of monsters, and a load of balance changes. So here's a really powerful team of three monsters that will tear through the content. It's so tanky, over time it does so much damage as well. And as always, I'll give you the monsters, I'll give you the builds, I'll give you the food, and I'll give you an example of what it looks like using them in battle. So no surprises, all these monsters can be found in the Forgotten World area, which if you're looking for it, is located at the bottom end of Horizon Beach. So first up in our set of monsters, we've got Cracker Turtle. Not super vital, but a light shifted one would be ideal. This gives you debuff removal at the start of every turn for each monster in the party, which gives you some extra tankiness. So this monster is gonna create shields based on its defense values. It's also gonna create a host of buffs, which is then gonna also give it more shield. We're also gonna look at taking any ancient specific traits in any of these monsters. So in the first tree, we're taking the whole host of buffs, which allows them to apply regeneration and channel. Buffing shield is gonna give us a shield every time we apply buffs. And as a really cool addition this time, Tenacious Barrier actually gives us chances to resist debuffs when we have barrier on our monsters. And because everything's defense focused, we want to make the most of any defensive equipment that we're going to equip on our monster. So defense focus is a must. We're going to apply shield to all our monsters using fire shield, which is also going to apply burn as a debuff, important for later. And we're going to take the ancient nature skill, which gives us a stack of age at the start of combat, and it's also going to make our healing and our shielding even more strong. In the third tree, Burning Desire actually gives us additional shield when we apply burns. It's going to work with some synergies down the line. And Wildfire is going to spread extra burn on enemies. And in the fourth tree, there's Incinerate, which when an enemy takes burn, there's a chance to apply Armor Break. And Reckless Mending, that when Armor Break is applied, a monster will regain 3% of its max health and max mana just adding to our survivability. This build is going to have massive survivability about it. As our ultimate, we're taking extra shield, so Aurora Shield. And equipment-wise, we're going big on the defense. So restoring ones is going to aid our shielding skills. It's also giving us extra defense in the weapon. Brace, that's going to give us a bit of mana regeneration alongside it. Drum, if you've got it does exactly the same as restoring one, gives us additional healing and shielding skills. And Shell is just all out defense. Okay, that's one down. Next, we've got a combo builder and a healer to go with our shielder. So next up is Tarblob. So I think the better of his healing skills in Tarblob is in the first tree, which is Life Wave, which is health-based healing. So the more health you've got, the more healing you're going to do. And this thing heals everybody. Now in the second tree, there's Sticky Impact, which applies Tether to every enemy, and Stuck Tight, which means that every tethered enemy has increased critical chance on them. This is going to help us do a lot of damage at the end with additional crit chance on each enemy. So we're going to use this to apply tether to everybody and rack up the possible damage that we can do. In our third tree, we're looking at anything that's aging based. So we're going to gain extra age stacks at the end of every turn. With primal rage, this is going to increase the damage that we can do. So after this monster's put a whole host of tethers down, we're going to use this to do massive damage. We're also going to heal extra HP for every age stack that we're accumulating up to a max of seven. In the final tree, we want mana burn because we're going to regenerate mana every time we apply burn. Multi burn allows us to spread more burn throughout the teams. Tri mage healing means that every time we apply a heal, there's a chance to apply burn, chill or poison to random enemies, which is great. And behind me here, critical healing in the bottom right hand corner means that your heals can land critical hits. And because of that, we're going to take any opportunity to pick up critical damage, critical chance throughout all of Tarblob's skill trees. And as an ultimate again, we're taking the hitting all enemies, bitumen deluge, it's going to apply a ton of tether. That's the aim. Spread tether throughout all the monsters. I'll add in as well, Tarblob, preferably a dark shift. This gives it overheal, which means that anytime anybody's healed over their max health, half of that extra health will be turned into shield synergizes lovely with Cracker Turtle. Every extra shield for everybody, mega sustainability all around. Equipment wise, it's going to be a mix of loads of health and 
boost a bit of crit chance and crit damage as well for that critical heal. So here I've gone Scythe for the crit chance, crit damage, HUD for the extra health, and some mana regeneration just to keep us up. Big on health with the Vital Ring and Feather for extra crit chance. Right, damage dealer time. We're keeping it simple. All of these monsters are really easy to pick up. We're going with Rampede. Now, of all of the shifts, this one is the most important that you actually need to get. We need a dark shifted one because bleed stacks on enemies do not get removed with a dark shifted Rampede. So this guy is going to be doing all the damage. He's also going to be getting extra help from the tether that's coming from the tar blob. And we're going to do this through the first tree with claws which gives extra critical damage. Critical hits are also going to apply bleed damage. You can see where we're going with this, right? He's got deep wounds, where bleed damage is increased by 40%. And this Earth Allegiance is really good. So it means all neutral attacks become Earth attacks, and Earth attacks ignore Earth resistance. So you're never going to have a resistance against these attacks. Now here I've specifically picked Claws as a single target damage, but you could easily go for Shred to do damage across a whole host of monsters as well, depending on the usage. In the second tree, there's a great aura of critical hits of allied monsters. I have a 7.5% chance to apply burn or shock as well, but burn most importantly. Hunt is going to increase critical chance of the party by 4% as well. We're taking the burning charge damage, which is going to hit all the monsters, hit them all with burn. Those burns are going to apply crit. With critical heat, our crits also have a chance to apply burn. And we've got a second stack of multi-burn, so we should be able to apply six stacks of burn in total. What is beautiful about this as well is the blinding spark skill at the bottom. So when an enemy takes burn damage, which we can apply up to six stacks of, there's also a chance to blind them. So not only are we going to be completely shielded, completely healed, and the enemies are going to be tethered, they're also going to have stacks of blind hit to them. So they are going to have real problems in hitting us with any significant amount of damage. So I'm not super sold on this third tree. I don't think the power focus is particularly worth it, but we do want to get to the bottom of the tree to get Ancient Predation, which is going to give us an additional age and a predation stack for all of our monsters at the start of the fight. And Armor Bypass is going to ignore 20% of a target's defense reduction. And in the fourth tree here, we're going to chance our armor at stacks of glory as well. So when we apply a debuff, there's a chance to also apply glory to ourselves, we can apply multi-glory, and through glorious spark, there's a chance to do extra damage when we have glory on us. Finally, in the very bottom corner, there's death blow, which increases our damage by 5% for each debuff that's on the target, which, as we're applying tons of burn, we're applying possibly some shock as well, there's going to be lots of debuffs on the targets, extra increased damage, a load of which is going to stay as bleed stacks and it's going to stay and happen every single round and we're only going to add to that and add to that more and more damage every round. Brilliant for taking out monsters, especially bosses with high health. So for Rampede's equipment, again we really want to use up crit damage, crit chance and what I'd really recommend if you have it is the Thorn Tendril which applies bleed stacks on attackers at 500% of the monster's crit damage. So the more crit damage we have, the more damage we're going to do as well. And again, these bleed stacks aren't going anywhere. They're not getting halved or anything. They are staying on the monster. Medallion gives us extra crit chance, bit of defense and mana regen. Bracelet, we need some mana regen on here to be able to do all the skills that we need. And Cape gives us extra crit chance, extra crit damage. Works lovely. Very quickly run through the food for each of the monsters. Our Cracker Turtle works on defense, so we give it peanuts. Our Tar Blob, its healing runs on health. So we give him health, we give him bananas. And our Rampede, that Thorn Tendril, runs off crit damage, so we give it Raspberries for crit damage. This gives him 170% crit damage, which then is multiplied 500 by 500% to calculate the damage it does with the Thorn Tendril. It's brilliant. So, this is what it looks like in action. Spoiler warning, this is on the boss at the end of the Forgotten World, Dracoma. If you don't want to watch that, totally understand. Save it for yourselves, go and find out. However, all we're really going to do is we're going to shield, we're going to apply a load of tether, and then we're going to do lots of burn damage. Before I show you, if you're still enjoying the Monster Sanctuary content, hit me with a like. I will keep on making more. I think there's a number more videos we can make with this new content now. Okay, so let's see how this works. So Cracker Turtle is going to apply Life Channel 
which gives everybody a small amount of shield. And because it's single target, we're applying claws with tar blob. And again, because it's single target, we're applying claws with rampede. And you can see we've built up seven stacks of bleed. And we've got two stacks of blind. Which means that the lava wave actually misses quite considerably on our monsters. We can then build up shield using fire shield. Look at everybody's shield build up quite considerably. Claws again applies extra stacks of tether. Which is going to increase our crit damage. And more claws again builds up the bleed. And look at that big chunk of bleed pop off there. We're going to repeat this, continuing to build up the bleed stacks. And then, after a couple of rounds, we've got 34 stacks of bleed on here. That is just going to take up a huge chunk of health, kill him dead in five turns. I think this could be optimized to be even better. This also wipes through all other monsters, sets of three in like three turns. I'd like to see how well it works in the arena as well, and possibly against some champion monsters with a bit of tweaking. So, if you're looking for a quick way to get some extra shift stones, perhaps to make this team or to test out some other teams, I highly recommend doing a speed run through of the arena. And for that, I highly recommend you check out this video on building the best team for farming arena as fast as possible. Enjoy your Monster Sanctuary, guys. I'll catch you in a bit.